we've been flying on Earth for just over a hundred years, and now we're like, yeah, we're gonna go to another planet and fly. It's crazy. This is ingenuity. NASA hopes it will give us a different view of things and allow us to study cliffs and craters and all the other places that rovers like this one simply can't get to. It's got these carbon fibre blades and they can spin eight times faster than the blades on a helicopter here on Earth at around 2,400 revolutions per minute. Now, because Mars is so far away from Earth, there's too much of a delay for you to be able to control this thing with a joystick. So what's happening is scientists are sending commands way, way, way in advance. So essentially, this machine will be taking off by itself, flying by itself, and landing by itself. You send the commands to the rover and the helicopter in the morning, and then you get the data back. You kind of have to learn to let go. It's gone, and what will be will be. And flying there won't be easy. The atmosphere is 100 times thinner than it is here on Earth. And on Earth, you know, when we're flying, it's the air, it's the atmosphere that pushes us up. So if we have only 1% of that atmosphere, we only have a little bit to get us lifted up. So what we had to do is we designed a helicopter that was really light. It's got solar cells, batteries, two cameras, one black and white and one in color, computer systems, navigation systems, all of this in a helicopter that's only the size of a chihuahua. It's nuts, it's crazy, but you know, it'll be quite wonderful if it works and it'll also be wonderful if it doesn't. But if it works? We could be sending more flying robots to Mars in the future and possibly using them as scouts for human missions one day.